I love you more than anyone in this world. I love you till the moon and beyond. If you have someone who have heard of this, or if you are someone who has told this to someone, or if you belong to the third category wherein you haven't told or heard of this, you certainly would have heard people engaging in these kinds of conversations, right? But have you told these lines or these words to yourself? Probably not. Hello ladies and gentlemen and a very warm welcome to Evolving Consciousness. I am Purushottam and the host of this video. This channel is all about personal development. This channel is to evolve the mindset, the behaviors, the habits to the next level, to upgrade your own consciousness so that you can perceive reality at its finest, so that to become a better version of yourself, so that you are expanding the horizons of your limits. Today's topic is self-love. Now, love is the most abused and the most misinterpreted word in today's modern era. Our interpretation of love is heavily conditioned based on the movies which we watch, the Bollywood and Hollywood movies, which define our understanding of love. But that's a completely distorted view of what true love means. If you really want to understand what true love is, we need to turn to the scriptures, we need to turn to history. The love which I am referring to as true love is the love which is based on the sense of acceptance, on the quality of relentless commitment, on the sense which is based on sacrifice, on the particular aspect which is based on a sense of absolute surrender, where you completely lose yourself. That is, as per the scriptures and as per the true essence of this emotion called love. Now, love has been made filthy because of the way we perceive it. But as per David Hawkins, one of the most pioneering researchers in the modern day quantum physics, who is the, the person who is responsible for bridging the world of quantum physics and spirituality, he considers love to be the emotion, highest spiritual vibration. So David Hawkins, his body of work majorly constitutes of calibrating the different human emotions into levels of consciousness. So in that, what David Hawkins did was, he did what is called as muscle testing experiment, wherein he subjected groups of people through various muscular tests and each of those group of people were, sub were having different kinds of emotional states. And he noticed that when you are vibrating at these lower emotions of anger, fear, sh guilt, shame, the muscle strength was lesser. And we, when you are upgrading your consciousness, when your emotional vibration was at a higher state, like love, peace, joy, freedom, that is when your muscle was tested the strongest. Now coming back to the focus of this video, self-love. Now one thing you all need to realize is that there is only one person you, have, you are going to stay with till your death and that one person is you yourself. But we often neglect our own selves. We are so socially malconditioned, our consciousness is so socially malconditioned that we absolutely, we don't, we are not even conscious of the fact that we are absolutely ignoring our own self. Now, one very misunderstanding or a crippled notion of self-love is most of us think that self-love is about pampering ourselves. Most of us feel that self-love is basically about the feel-good factor. But self-love has nothing to do with feel-good. It won't be an overstatement to say that self-love can be equated to self-discipline. Reason being that when you are completely, when you are in complete love in yourself, you are going to engage in activities which are going to be in good, which are going to be in a better state of affair, which are going to assist your body, mind and soul to evolve into its next version. 
and if you want to have a distinction in your mind like what are the activities i need to engage in versus what are the activities which i should avoid the easiest thumb rule is whenever you are in a crossroad ask yourself is this activity giving me short term pleasure for long term gain or is it long term loss or is it giving me short term pain for long term pleasure and long term well being now why am i saying this is human beings choices human beings habits are based on the foundation of pain and pleasure we'll make a full blown video on this on the psychology of pain and pleasure but what i'm trying to bring your attention to is all our choices are fundamentally driven through these two emotions we want to avoid things which are painful and we want to engage in activities which give us pleasure to the senses now the funny and the amusing thing is that we cannot escape either of them you cannot engage in pleasure forever let's give let me give you a practical understanding so that it really uh, so that you come you understand it from a deep standpoint let's say that eating sweets give you gives you pleasure right but it gives you pleasure but eating sweets for a long period of time will give you the pain of having diabetes right so in a way you are not able to avoid the pain which will come from eating from engaging in that pleasure so essentially pain and pleasure are unavoidable the only choice every human being has is which are the pains he needs to engage in which will give him a long term pleasure which will assist in the well being of his body mind and soul hence whenever when we talk about self love any activities which helps you develop your body mind and soul to the next level remember those are the actions which prove that you are engaging in acts of self love and if you are not you probably are not engaging in self love you are engaging in something which you think is self love but it is not now why is self love so important in today's modern day right it is said that our interactions with the world the way we perceive reality is a reflection of the way we perceive ourselves the relationship which we have with ourselves defines our prosperity defines our income levels hence it is an indispensable requirement to nurture the love of within ourselves right to nurture this person whom we often ignore because we are in this world filled with comparisons and contradictions and ironies all over and the self sabotaging belief systems they become a part of our belief systems and those belief systems drive our habits and habits drive our actions and actions sooner or later later become our destiny hence it is extremely important that we begin to love ourselves now i am going to offer you four potent ways of which we can of through which we can inculcate this practice of self love number 1 <clears throat> celebrate your uniqueness or honor your uniqueness there is no one in this planet like you there is no one in this planet the same fingerprints as you have there is no one in this planet who walks the way you walk there is no one in this planet who thinks the way you think there is no one in this planet who has endured the sufferings which you have endured there is no one in this planet who has the primal genius which you are you are you are absolutely unique my friend and it is very important to honor your uniqueness because we are in this world which is heavily afflicted by what i called the social media pandemic where we are in constant comparison with all our peers when we see people having a good time in social media we automatically feel down we automatically feel degraded because our narrative of a good life our self image is based on what they perceive or what they portray as having a rich life or as having a good life but what we forget in in the midst of all this 
comparisons is we are truly unique. I want to give you a life example of a person who I truly adore and respect. I know you would have heard of him. I am talking about the legendary actor in Bollywood, Shah Rukh Khan. When Shah Rukh Khan was starting off his film career, he was called a eunuch. He was called, he was considered gay. The most heinous and preposterous abuse a man can ever face in his life is when his manhood is questioned. And in his manhood was questioned throughout most part of his career. But did Shah Rukh let go of his uniqueness? No, he didn't. In fact, he made his body of work and his life give life such an epitome of success. He is so outrageously successful that it won't be an overstatement to say that he is one of the most successful Bollywood actors in the planet. Because his fame, his outreach completely obliterates the horizons of, of sanity, right? He is one, he's one actor who is known across international audiences, across countries. This is the hallmark quality of titans. This is the hallmark quality of virtuosos. They honor their uniqueness. They don't let the world dictate to them what being a man is and what not being a man is. Now his work and the way his life has progressed, the success is a befitting reply to the people who once questioned his manhood. So ladies and gentlemen, do celebrate your uniqueness. Do celebrate the person you are. Do honor the person you are. Because there is truly no one like you in this planet. Hence, it is extremely crucial for you to honor yourself. Now, one thing I want to touch about here, right? There is a term called RAM in modern day psychology. RAM syndrome in modern day psychology, which says the world revolves around me. Now, I am not talking you to become someone like that. There are very certain elements to be mindful of because oftentimes we tend to over implement what we heard and we don't understand things in the right context. When we talk about self-love, right, we need to be very careful. Are we becoming self-obsessed or are we practicing self-love? When you are afflicted to this RAM syndrome, the world revolves around me, you feel that you are the center point of this universe. No, that is not correct. What I am trying to address here is that you need to honor your uniqueness. You need to celebrate your uniqueness. But you shouldn't have this mindset that you are something, a mark above and everyone else needs to revolve on. No, that's not self-love. That's self-sabotage but in a different way. So we need to be extremely mindful. When, we, when I'm talking about honoring yourself, I'm not asking you to blow up your ego and build this false sense of superiority complex. All I'm asking you to consider is stop comparing yourself with others. Stop having this identity, this victim identity as to what you cannot do. There are things which you can do which no one else can. And always remember, there are no extra people in this planet. Every person has a pristine purpose, no matter in which walk of life he belongs to. So honor your uniqueness. Point number two. Do hard tasks on a day-to-day -day basis. We need to do hard tasks daily. We human beings are so conditioned to the path of least resistance. We always resist doing hard things. Because whenever we read some content, right, whenever we are deeply inspired and influenced, we might feel, we might feel this initial momentum to start implementing them and after a few moments of days, a few days, that inspiration dies down, right? And we say it's hard to do it. But why are we resisting those hard things? Let's remember, 
anyone who has become great hasn't become great following the easy path they have done extremely challenging things they have pursued challenges which no one ever dared of and after that did they become great no one became legend through easy i would with due respect invite you to consider in a particular day do you just coast through the day or do you mindfully engage in activities in your work which challenge you or do you push yourself to learn something new each day because let's remember small micro wins over a period of time result in a tsunami of success and daily acts of neglect soon build up into a catastrophic failure success and failure doesn't happen overnight that's a complete misconstrued understanding of success and failure success and failure is a product of the momentum which was built by the individual either through acts of neglect or through acts of attention hence it is vital that each of us engage in some hard tasks now this hard task need not necessarily be in the work dimension even in the dimension of your health if you are someone who is accustomed to walk start jogging i'm not asking you to make massive changes all i am inviting you to consider with due respect is start small think big start small act now think big start small act now and these smiley micro changes will soon catapult catapult into a huge mammoth change and you won't even know about it hence do challenge yourself every day and we human beings are so conditioned to comfort to so conditioned to least resistance we don't want to give time to situations if things are not going great in a relationship we just want to run away from the relationship we have this escapist mindset the things are not comfortable for me i would just leave the relationship instead of doing the hard things persisting enduring but if you are a person with deep self respect the reason why it's being asked for you to do hard things on a day to day basis on a regular basis is because you are going to rise in your own eyes your self respect will start ascending and once your self respect starts ascending you my friend are engaging in the art of self love hence it's extremely important to engage in activities which push you coming to point number 3 connect with yourself now we find this very unusual right very unconventional what do you mean connect with yourself are we talking about going to the earth are we talking about isolating ourselves are we talking about completely cutting off the world no i'm not talking about either of these what i am humbly suggesting is when we talk about connecting with yourself we need to hear the voice in the head which is almost going on 24 into 7 but we seldom pay attention to it we don't pay attention to it because it's uncomfortable when life is not going good we tend to distract ourselves we tend to travel we tend to find these escape mechanisms right to divert our attention from the voice which the mind is trying to tell us something we always want to escape from this feeling of discomfort there cannot be any form of self betrayal more heinous than this because let's remember that temporary relief which you are getting from engaging in some other activity will only give you a temporary relief sooner or later you need to face yourself you need to face the voice in the head and the, the more you ignore the voice in the head the more you are losing that relationship with your own self hence it is very essential to practice solace to practice stillness to practice this habit of solitude so that we can hear what our mind is thinking 
now there are two ways we can go about practically implementing this right one way is to take out a particular segment of the day it can be half an hour it can be an hour where we are completely disconnected from the outer world and we only spend time with ourselves we can either contemplate we can either read a good book we can meditate or any activity which will help you connect with yourself the second way right and which is a more profound way is to practice what is called in today's terms as mindfulness when we are completely aware of our own thoughts 24/7 when we practice mindfulness mindfulness is phenomenal physiological and psychological and spiritual benefits but this video's focus is not about mindfulness but mindfulness at the core what does mindfulness mean right mindfulness means pay attention to the voice in the head pay attention to the inner conversations which you are having 24 into 7 and the more awareness you bring into those conversations essentially what you are doing is building a strong foundation with your own self and once you do this the faculties of the subconscious mind are activated and they will give you answers to the most challenging questions to the most daunting questions of your life hence connecting with yourself is an indispensable need to practice self love it is the most vital and the most crucial element here because if you don't connect with yourself if you don't form that relationship if you are not even aware of the inner dialogues the inner conversations which are happening in your mind you are betraying yourself coming to point number 4 in order to truly love yourself you need to truly give to others you need to cultivate this the sense you need to cultivate this tendency of service the more people you help the more you love yourself because let's understand a subtle element here a subtle nuance when you are helping others what signal are you sending to the brain can incapable people help others no right only person who is himself capable can help someone who in some dimension is incapable can a beggar help another beggar no a person who is relatively good from a financial standpoint only he can help someone now this can be applied across all dimensions when you act in this engagement when you constantly engage in acts of helping others without any expectation of return from them because let's remember when service is done with the intention of an expectation or of a reward or of an adorance or if you are doing something for getting something out of the other person that is not service that is labor don't make service into labor i'm reminded of uh, of a teaching which i was given by one of my most adored and respected professors during my masters in iit madras i truly adore and respect him for the kind of professionalism he exhibited during his uh, teaching he told me something which i will always have which will which i will always keep in my mind a lesson which i deeply cherish he said that pushottam whenever i teach in the class it might be a gathering of 1000 people it might be a gathering of 100 people it might be a gathering of one person or it might also be an empty room but that does not decide the intensity of my delivery he told me that never look for validation from outside and decide your delivery because that's a very futile way of serving at delivering because one fine day people will put you on a pedestal and the next fine day they drag you towards the bottom and that's a very faulty foundation to have the same is the same lesson i learned from the great motivational speaker sandeep maheshwari he also said something beautiful i don't do this to get adoration from people i don't give do this to appease people or to get the appreciation as to how great i am i do this because it fulfills my soul if you are operating through the mode of service 
then you truly respect yourself you are rising in your own eyes and that is a very powerful way to practice self love i hope these four points resonated with you and i hope in the next 24 hours you are going to start installing some routines start changing your behavior so that you can take action in these four dimensions which i talked about because ideation without execution is delusion hence this video main focus was to give respect to the person who we are going to be till our death bed and even beyond so let's honor the person who we are going to be for such a long time of time long period of time thank you so much and meet you in the next video